From the moment we're born, we begin to develop our identities. Who are we? What should we care about? And how should we relate to all these people around us? As it turns out, the way each of us answers these questions largely depends on the culture we grow up in. One major difference between cultures in the East and the West is how they view the individual in relation to the group. Some cultures tend to place more importance on the individual. They're known as individualistic or me societies. Many Western societies, including those in the United States, Australia, and large swaths of Europe are considered me cultures. People in a me culture believe each individual is responsible for their own well-being. Their circle of responsibility extends only to their immediate family members, parents, spouses, or children. They view their responsibility to others in society, like their neighbors or classmates, as limited. After all, they're also individuals who should be taking care of themselves. On the other hand, some cultures place more importance on the group. They're called collectivist societies, or we cultures. Many Eastern cultures, including those in China, India, and Japan, are considered we cultures. People in a we culture prioritize strong social ties and belonging to a larger group. These groups might include classmates, neighbors, and extended families. They strive for group harmony and believe the individual should make the best decisions for the overall well-being of their group. If you take care of the group, they'll take care of you. So how does this me versus we difference shape our behavior? As it turns out, this seemingly subtle distinction has some surprising effects. Imagine two families each go out to dinner. The family from a me culture might consist of just four people, two parents and their two children. The family from a we culture would need a much larger table to make room for two children, their cousins, and multiple sets of parents and grandparents. At the me table, everyone would order the specific meal they wanted. When the food comes, they may trade a bite or two, but for the most part, each person would eat their own meal. At the we table, on the other hand, multiple dishes would be ordered for the whole table. They would be placed in the center and all members of the family would share them. Now, let's say a family member was running late. How is each table likely to respond? At the me table, people are expected to be masters of their own fate. So when teenage brother Lee arrives late, the family is more likely to attribute his tardiness to some fundamental aspect of Lee's personality like assuming he is lazy or irresponsible. At the we table, on the other hand, they're more likely to see Lee's behavior as part of a larger context. Rather than blaming him for being lazy, they may assume external factors were involved. Maybe there was an accident on the road and Lee got caught in bad traffic. This tendency to either credit the individual or the larger context applies to positive things too. Say Lee was coming from a basketball game where he scored a game-winning shot. At the me table, Lee would be celebrated as the hero. His individual action won the game for the whole team. In a celebratory toast, Lee would likely speak about how his hard work, determination, and focus led him to this moment. Meanwhile, at the we table, the team's overall victory would be celebrated. Lee's toast would more likely focus on how his teammates, coaches, and mentors led to the team's success. He may even mention a larger context, like the support of the team's school administration or fan base. Both of these viewpoints are true. Lee's action secured the victory, but the team's effort won the game. There is no objective, right or wrong way to think about individuals versus groups. What works for one culture just may not work for another. It's also important to remember that culture is only one of the many factors that influence who we are. So some people from a we culture may prioritize the individual, and some me culture people may value their communities over themselves. Culture is never all that we are, but as one of those invisible forces that shape us, it's well worth knowing a little more about. So the next time the behavior of someone from another culture seems weird or even rude, Try asking yourself, 
How did they grow up to understand the world? Could my behavior seem as weird from their viewpoint? Cultural differences don't hold all the answers, but they can help us begin to understand each other and appreciate the richness and variety of human societies.